Good morning, everybody. Today is Friday, November 18th. It's just eight on the nose. And I am coming at you from Ohio. You know, I've been inspired by many content creators and we continue to inspire each other. It's very challenging at times when you feel defeated because the cases are just kind of spinning their wheels, going nowhere, like in the Kylie Rodney case. And then you've got Trinity and that whole mess. Trinity Bacchus, oh my goodness, what a sad and terrible, terrible tragedy. Um, and then you got Paisley, Paisley McConan. What's the rest of her name? I got it right here. Oh, so many names. So many names. Hold on just a second. I want to get the whole thing. Paisley McConan Woodard from Grass Valley. So that was the one that was 15 that was hit by the car a year ago when she was on ecstasy with her boyfriend, Francis Fowler. So I want to just kind of give an overview in talking about this area of Nevada County and this pattern. Let's just focus on these three young women that have all lost their lives in the last 12, 12 and a half months. And that common thread that they all have with Sunshine Fowler, Francis Fowler's mother, who attended Kylie Rodney's celebration of life and so obviously I think it's safe to assume that Francis Fowler and Trinity would have known about Kylie and what had happened because you know I mean the whole world knew right and his mother went to the service I don't know if either of them did or if any of their friends did it is extremely concerning if nothing else it raises questions and it's so important to ask questions right here I want to say everything I say in my videos is my opinion only it's purely for the sake of conversation and speculation opening up a discussion hopefully disseminating information and possibly educational it is sometimes under the blanket of entertainment and I don't guide my content towards entertainment. I guide my content towards education. However, it's YouTube, so I just like to cover all the bases. So, you know, one of the things we're missing in Trinity's case and Kylie's case is the basic timeline of everything that happened on the last day of their lives everything that happened in the last hours of their lives everything that happened that we know of that can possibly be discovered that is basic information and if law enforcement is not gathering that information and that includes going back a few days sometimes a few weeks then that is 100% dereliction of duty. And that's illegal. It's illegal for law enforcement to not enforce the law. I asked my 10 year old yesterday a little riddle. I said, what would you call law enforcement that doesn't enforce laws? This is cute. You gotta love the kids, right? She said, well, then they'd be nothing because they canceled themselves out. And then we had a conversation about, you know, just wearing the uniform and kind of being posers and being in costume. Like it's not Halloween and it's not cute and it's not funny. It, it's disgusting. It's 100% dereliction of duty if they are not doing thorough investigations into the last weeks, days, and hours of Trinity Bacchus's life. Same with Kylie Rodney. Now, something that all three of these cases have in common, again, is where's the videotape surveillance footage from all the doorbell cameras, all the traffic cams. Do any of these sheriff deputies wear body cams? That is pretty much the national standard now. It 
it's just not safe for law enforcement to not be wearing body cams to protect themselves. That's not even about protecting the public, supposedly. It's about protecting themselves, but of course also to protect the public, to protect everyone, just to have an accurate account of what happened and how things went down. So how things are going down, CCTV took down all of her content yesterday or the night before last, and she had done a video the other day I think it was a live conversation with the uh, person who claims that he's Trinity Bacchus's biological father. And it seems that there's question about that, that he thought he was Trinity's biological father. And maybe when she was about four years old or something, they did a paternity test and he found out that he wasn't. So I don't know. I don't know all the details about... Uh, the relationship. He admitted that he hadn't spoken to Trinity in about nine months and that his ex-wife was actually closer with him than, closer with her than he was, which I thought was kind of interesting and not, not a good way, of course. But, you know, the main, the main problem that I have with this whole situation, and I mentioned this yesterday, is the drugs involved. Obviously, in Paisley's case, you've got ecstasy, allegedly. In Trinity's case, you've got LSD and marijuana that may or may not be laced with something. And then in Kylie's case, you, there was allegedly alcohol, allegedly what her toxicology showed up some marijuana, which is legal for not minors. It's illegal for minors. So... There were a couple other trace drugs found in her system. I think cocaine was actually one of them. So where's the accountability? I mean, that's just baseline. Law enforcement is usually quick to arrest anybody in a situation where somebody dies and has drugs in their system, especially if that somebody is a minor. These kids are not protected. They're not being protected by their parents. They're not being protected by law enforcement. They're being hung out to dry, and it's not okay. It's not the least bit okay. It definitely has an air of sexism that these are all young girls, young women. And as far as reporting behaviors of adults that are selling drugs to children, it doesn't seem like that's an issue around that area. It, it's almost like they just don't care. The adults just don't care if the children are doing drugs. I don't know. I don't get it. But I'm very uncomfortable with the whole picture of these three people that have all died in the last 12 and a half months and just any common denominators, of which there's over a dozen that I've come up with. If you have been following my videos, maybe later this afternoon I can itemize them again. But, you know, it gets really boring going over the same old stuff, right? We're wanting to get resolution. We're wanting to get some questions answered. And in order to do that, the first thing we have to do is to come up with the good questions. Like... What are the chances of Trinity's ex-estranged stepfather being a deputy sheriff in the same county that she goes missing in and is found deceased? What are the chances? I'd say about close to zero. What are the chances of Frances Fowler having two beautiful red-headed girlfriends that are almost identical twins to each other, having these two girlfriends die within 12 months of each other. What are the chances? Slim to nil. Of course there's freak accidents, there's exceptions to every rule, but these things need to be looked at, especially when you consider his mother's first statement when 
Trinity was missing and she put out something on Facebook that said, I am deeply involved in this case. And when I read that, I thought, well, that didn't come out right. I thought certainly she was a kid that was misspeaking. When I found out that that was actually his mother who said she was deeply involved in this case, that's some pretty weird verbiage to use if you're not admitting some culpability, in my opinion. On that, I'm going to ask people to please like the video if you feel like it's something that should be shared. Please share it. Please subscribe. Those things help the channel. I'm going to keep asking these questions. I'm going to keep at it, especially with Kylie Rodney. I'm not giving up. These questions must be answered. There must be justice. There absolutely must be justice for Kylie. This is sickening. This is absolutely sickening. And then, you know, there's that whole tragedy over there in Idaho with those four people in the university. Like, that's nuts. That is just nuts. There's a lot of tragic victimization going on, and it's not okay, people. It's not okay. But staying focused is really important, and finding justice for each and every one is a goal it's a it's a lofty goal but anything's possible and there's police whose jobs it is to find these perpetrators we all pay big money for our taxes to keep police available 24 7. it's a huge part of any city budget so we are all entitled to expect that service in return. If you can't provide the service, hang up the badge, hang up the gun. It's not okay to do a shoddy job when you've got people's lives on the line. It needs to stop because if it doesn't stop, it's going to continue. On that, I'm going to say, please take care of yourself today. I'm going to try to do an afternoon video as well. And drink your water, eat your protein, your fruits and veggies, get your exercise, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, take it easy. TGI Friday, put your feet up and try to take the rest of the day off if you can, right? So I'll see you guys this afternoon. Thanks for watching.